When your beloved someone brings you home flowers for Valentine's Day, you might think it's both sweet and beautiful, and it is. But if you dare to take a closer look, flowers might not be the only thing they brought you home as a gift. This gift could very well be home to many different bugs and microorganisms. So let's see what hides in your flowers for Valentine's Day. One of the biggest animals common in flowers are aphids. These are small sap-sucking insects and in large numbers they can be very destructive to plants. And not only to your flowers. Most aphids are wingless, but some have wings allowing them to fly as high as 600 meters, moving from plant to plant to start a new family. Aphids have a mouth part called a stylet, which they pierce the plant with and feed on the sap. This sap contains a high amount of sugar, which the insect then poops out as a sweet substance known as honeydew. Ants love these sweet droplets, and a large number of aphids therefore attract ants. In return for the honeydew, the ants protect the aphids against predators. And one predator that feeds on aphids is the ladybug. A much smaller insect common on plants are spider mites. These tiny insects are less than a millimeter in size, and like the aphid, spider mites are also pests of plants. The spider mite punctures plant cells to feed which causes damage to the host plant. They are called spider mites because they are able to produce silk string like spiders. This web of silk string is made to protect the mite and its eggs from predators. The female spider mite can lay up to 20 eggs per day, which are able to hatch in as little as three days. So the population is able to grow rapidly when conditions are right. If you are lucky and get a flower in a pot for Valentine's Day, you might get another mite as a hitchhiker as well. And this mite is called the mold mite or cheese mite. These mites feed on the mold on old leaves and other decaying material in the pot. They are called cheese mites because some species are used in the production of special cheeses. This mite is known to cause skin and respiratory allergies and other health issues in humans. Your flowers needs water, and in that water lives things as well. This could be any of a large number of single-celled organisms, which have contaminated the flowers on the way home. Single-celled organisms can be carried by the wind or get transferred to the flowers from your hands when you handle them. The smallest things I found were bacteria, and I found a lot of them. Bacteria divide very rapidly in the warm, nutrient-rich water. And after a couple of days, the stagnant water in the vase is filled with millions of bacteria. The water sample I took from the flowers is one of the samples with the highest concentration of bacteria I have ever seen. Thank you for watching this video. I will as always put a link to the microscope and materials I used in this video down in the description. And if you have any ideas to what you want to see under the microscope in the future, or if you have any questions about the video or microscopy in general, please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing.